So what's up, everybody? This is Awesome Talk. Yay! Um, Blinky, Blinky, everybody. Blinky. Blinky. Blinky and Clinky to you, sir. And um, just to go around the room, okay, we're going to talk about who's in the room because we have a really amazing interview tonight yes, we do. for our viewers, okay? Uh, my name is Rick, the bartender. I'm Andrew, the beer drinker. Sarah, that's it. And if you wouldn't mind, please introduce yourself, sir. Um, hi, everybody. This is I'm Moses Mosley. Um, I'm an actor slash model slash public speaker slash obesity slash The Walking Dead enthusiast and actor. Nice. Ex <laughs> excellent. 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 Well, thank you very much for doing this today, dude. This is really, really great. Um, and I know we have plenty of stuff we want to well, ask. We, so who wants we've to got start? A bajillion and a half questions. Um, I'll actually I'll get started and I'll actually touch off of uh, what what you just said about being a, a Walking Dead enthusiast and actor. Um, <sighs> How did you How did you get into it? Did you know a guy who knew a guy, or? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's a funny story. Um, I started out being a regular um, background zombie, and just one day, I did like about two episodes of that, and um, one day I um, decided to submit my photos directly to AMC, and I got a phone call about a week or two later, um, at 4 a.m. in the morning, actually. <laughs> and they were like, hey, man, you know, sorry about the hour, but um, you just got your pictures, um, you like your face, um, this just opened up, do um, you want it? And like, I was in a daze, but like, something told me to say yes, and I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> Logic told you to I say yes. I didn't really know what was going on, but something said say yes, so I said yeah. Of course. And about, about an hour later, I got an email um, that was telling me where I have to go and exactly where I have to be there and everything. And um, I looked at it and I was like, okay, so that wasn't a dream, okay. Nice. <laughs> so like, um, I, um, I, um, I looked up the um, address and everything and I um, went out. I actually had to be there at 8 a.m. that same day. So like, you know, I splashed some coffee in my face and got in the car and just drove down there. And they were like, you know, hey, so glad, so glad you're here. You know, um, this is what we have open for you. This is what you got to do. Um, you, you still sound cool with it. You know, at first it was like a bunch of makeup. Uh, can't see anything, uh, gotta walk around like a zombie out there, like, I was like, I don't know, then, I was, so that little voice in my head said, say yes, and I was like, yeah, I'll do it, cool. <laughs> so I went through the process and everything, and, um, I did a couple of the, um, episodes, and it was awesome, like, I'm, that was like the best phone call I ever got, and I'm so grateful for it, it was awesome. How long did the makeup, how long does the makeup take? Um, it took about two and a half hours every day. Uh, anyway. And, uh, about how long did it take to chop your arms off and then regrow them? <laughs> they had some special cream for me to put on every night. Oh, that's good. It's good. So, fast, so like it, it grew back the next day, so I could be ready to get chopped up again. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> now, actually, going going to the uh, the arm aspect of it, um, I saw a few pictures from. I think it was, uh, it was one of the the uh, the the jail scenes, uh, and it was a. Uh, Pre uh, editing, and so you saw the, the actor that plays Herschel, his name escapes me at the moment, but how he had the green sock on. Is that basically what they did for your arms? You had like green arm socks? That's exactly what they did uh, for us, and we had to walk around like stiff all day. Pretty much like this, puffing out, like puffing out, just holding our arms back. But yeah, they use the green screen. Okay. Yeah. Right, cool. Do you have a lot of preparation you have to do? Like, do, you, do they force you to kind of walk around like that all day to, to, to get into character, or do you just jump into it? Kind of, it's a little bit of both, really. Like, um, you know, I did a couple practices. I had to do a lot of stretching because, like, I had to keep my body in to um, show my ribs, you know. And I also had to, um, like, like get, my, get my, my my arms used to being that stiff for that period of time. So, like, I did a couple stretches and stuff, like, throughout throughout the um, process. And I also had to get used to being blind because, you know, we didn't see any, we couldn't see anything while we were filming or nothing. Wow. So, like, we had to, like, get used to being able to walk around and not being disoriented or having a fear of falling on our faces while we were, you know, um, while we were filming. So, like, once we got used to that and, like, you know, got coherent with everybody and started taking direction and stuff, then it, it was easy. Like, we got we got, we got on pretty fast. What what is the purpose of um, making you blind so you can't see anything? Yeah, what was covering your eyes? Yeah, it was um, the contact lens they had in our, in our eyes over the okay. process. Okay. Um, you know, they helped um, you know, bring the they bring the zombie fire version of ourselves to life. So you know, we couldn't walk around with regular eyes; it was just ruining everything. So like, we had to better put those in our eyes so we could see with the light around our eyes. Right, right, right. Is there a lot that you have to do to prepare mentally to get into that mode? I can't hear you. What'd you say? Is there a lot you have to do to prepare mentally to get into that mode? Like, can you just switch on and off? 
You know what it's I mean? kind of like that too, but um, it's something that you have to put in your head, you know, like, okay, I'm dumb, I'm slow. <laughs> um, I, I look at a Rex and you have to get used to it, but you know, you have to keep telling yourself, like, okay, you're not smart today, you're a dummy. Like, you're, you're, you're slow, but you're still moving and you're still important, so just act like that too. <laughs> <laughs> you're stupid, <laughs> you're but you're head, important. But like, well, like, once you get used to it, it's really easy. Like, it's, it's not something that. You have to like constantly like be like, oh man, like damn, like I don't want to do this today. Like it's like it's, it's actually fun to do. So you know, it's something that you catch on quickly. And once you get caught on doing it, it, it it's like the second nature to you. How cool! I, I just have to know how cool it is. How cool is it to to get that phone call at four in the morning, do a few episodes, and then realize that somebody is going to make an action figure of you? How sweet is that? That is another funny story. Like I actually didn't even know about my action figure until like um at a party actually a uh, little get together some of my friends were having you know um, you know they invited they invited me over getting up because you know they were like hey like, they were calling a bunch of girls say yeah friends are actor like you got to come over and see them and like when I got in like I got like drilled and like with, with questions and stuff and like I, after I told them the stuff that I've been in and um I told the main one The Walking Dead a girl that I was talking to actually she was like you know you got an action figure right and I was like what <laughs> I was like you said yes yeah. you had to like Google my name and like pulled it up and I was like are you kidding me and like, ironically a week later I started getting them all in the mail people asking me to sign them instead of send them back to them so I was like this is this is insane like, wow. yeah. it, was, it was like a I had to stare at it for at least an hour like are you kidding me <laughs> yeah that, one thing I wanted to say and this was uh, we were talking about this right before we uh, called you was um, even though your your particular character, the uh, pet one, you were pet one too, right? You were number one. Yeah, I, I expected so much. Uh, we only get number one in awesome talk. Yeah. <laughs> but um, no, the just the even though you had a very not a yeah you had a, a minimal amount of time like screen time in comparison to like a lot of the leading roles and everything, but the fact that you were one of the it was one of the most iconic moments of the series, if you ask me, was uh, that first scene mm. with uh, Michonne, uh, you know, saving Andrea with with the two pets behind her. Like that scene with her, with you don't even see her face, you just see the hood, the katana, and then these two armless, jawless dudes behind her. Like it's got to be fucking cool as hell to just be able to be like, yeah, I, that was me. <laughs> <laughs> like actually it was the hardest thing in the world not to say anything about anything like because you know everything mm. so hush hush you can't say anything until it's out right. there and it was just like 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 a build up like i wanted to explode like a volcano like that was the yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when like you know like just looking at it and just you know seeing everything moving like that because you know i didn't see anything while i was doing it it was just like a okay that's what i look like like i was moving like that like cool okay <laughs> that's me it really is it it awesome yeah. Do, do they make you? Do they make you sign a contract that you won't talk and think, Do they do that for everybody? All confidentiality. You you got to be hush hush. Can't say too much anything. Right. Right, well, you'll, you'll be getting knocked at your door. I, I got. I got. I got. I do have one question. When do the aliens come in? <laughs> you know. <laughs> I guess when everything is closed. I don't know. <laughs> in your like, I mean, I, I realize this is your career, but in your real life, how interested are you in like the horror genre and zombies and all that? I mean, do you have any interest at all, or? Honestly, I've always loved horror movies. I've always loved them. And the funny thing about The Walking Dead, I didn't even know anything about it until I got cast for it. Yeah. So I, I did my parts and everything. Like I had to go back and look at all the other seasons. And when I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm an automatic, I'm an automatic fan. Like, yeah, it, was, it was awesome. Like, I didn't, yeah. I knew it, I didn't know anything about it, but when I saw everything, like you know, it was that's when I was like, this is like one of the awesomest shows on cable TV right now. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Where, where do they film most of it? Um, a lot of it uh, done in Georgia, Sonoya area, and um, but uh, a little bit on um, Grantville, like pretty much a lot in the Georgia area. And how did you how did you end up on the show to begin with? I mean, what did you just did, were they were there open auditions or, or what happened? There was um they had like a little email and stuff they were sending out like um they they weren't actually being specific about what it was for, but since you know. Well, since I, I submit to a million and one things a day, and I just forget that I submit to them. Sure. Like, I, I submitted some of my photos and stuff, and I got a, um, an email. It was like, hey, um, we're interested in you come out here uh, for zombie school or something. And I was like, zombie school? What are you talking about? <laughs> Is it like clown college or something? <laughs> like five minutes. And I'm like, uh, okay. So I, <laughs> Whatever. That's when I found out about the show and stuff, and it was like what we were doing. And 
I didn't even like get into it until I, I got cast in that bigger part. You know, like yeah. until I had to look up what the whole thing was about. So I got cast in the bigger part of Don Pedro Walker. But like, it, yeah, it was, it was it was a cool experience. Uh, <laughs> so um, let so you're you're young, dude. You're what, 22, 23? 22 here, right on the head, yeah. Okay, so you, I mean, this is a huge step for you at 22, man. I mean, this is, this is... insane, because, like, I've actually only been um, modeling for about three years now. Okay. And I've been getting into acting for, like, two years now. So to get an opportunity like that at such a young start in my career, like, it's like, it was like a, like a godsend, you know, like a knock on the door saying, hey, you need to be doing this, so I'm going to give you this, you know, like, you know, just like, wow, you know. What? It, was, it was a true blessing. It was a well, you, said, blessing. you say you only started two years ago. I mean, what was what were your plans before that? Did you have any plans or? I was well. I, I just finished college yesterday. I just um, got my associates in criminal justice, and that's all I was nice. doing. Yeah, I just actually just um my first opportunity I got. I was coming out of um a class one day out of college at Georgia State, and um a girl pulled me to the side and was like. Hey, do you want to be in a movie? And I was like, uh, what kind of movie? Like that? You know, like I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Usually, usually when they say that, it means come by to the Motel 6 and we're going to make a fucking movie. Yeah. And disregard, disregard the donkey in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> Dark room and they're going to put some chloroform over me and take me in. <laughs> You may not wake up with all your organs. Yeah, they normally don't ask in that case. They just take. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to be in a movie? What? Where's my kidney? Typical woman. Take, take, take. <laughs> you can't up to a beautiful girl. I mean, come on. That's, that's also true. I feel you. I feel you on that. <laughs> no, um, they took. They um, took me to the side. like, oh no, it wasn't. It's not anything like that. It's like an official movie. They filmed it down at um, Georgia Dome and everything, like camera crews and everything, and they just need some people with nice faces or whatever. And, uh, she was like, I think you have a nice face, so I'm pretty sure they like you. I was like, well, okay, cool, you got a class, like, do I have any more class? I was like, you know, cool, I'll drive down and see what it is. And I um, drove down there and um, met with the camera crews and the directors and everybody, and they were like, it was actually turned to be the movie Joyful Noise. And, um, oh, okay. Yeah, and they were like, um, yeah, you got a nice face, like, we could use some background stuff, you know, do it. And I was like, you know, hey, why not? And I did that one. And that's when I started getting, after I did that um, that one movie, that one I started getting um, more emails and more phone calls saying, you know, this, we have this today, are you interested in? I just did more and more of them and just got my face out there, really, and just kept, it, kept on with it. And The Walking Dead just came along the line. And it was just one of those awesome and, things. Yeah, Walking Dead came along and they didn't want anything to do with your beautiful face. They wanted to smash it to bits and put in these contact lenses <laughs> oh, but, and chop off your arms. Thank you, <laughs> but, I, but, I, but I understand though, I understand the plight of having a beautiful bone structure as I have one, as you, you can yeah. probably see. I'll the the masculine sure. jawlines. You know, it's just very, very, you know, I always say have a look, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, it's the hat, Rick. You take the hat off and you're pathetic. I know, I take the hat off, everything goes to shit. It's, 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 it's the shadowy causes. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Walking Dead aside, um, are there any other projects that you're uh, uh, working on currently that you can talk about? Or Actually, um, I just got done doing a couple features and some TV shows that are coming out. Okay. And I, um, I was in a movie, um, 42, about Jackie Robinson, had a feature part in that. Wow. And uh, I've been um, still doing a bunch of auditions and stuff, and um, I'm still doing modeling. And also, I do um, public speaking against obesity, because um, I used to be overweight, actually. I used to weigh 300 pounds. Wow. And, uh, yeah, I lost 150 pounds, and ever since then I've been um, traveling and um, doing um, like personal speaking sessions with um, different colleges and high schools. And, oh, that's you know, awesome, man. That's school. really cool. That's Thanks. awesome. Yeah, actually, I want to I want to actually commend you for that because um, yeah. my father last year passed away, and um, thank you. He was he was grossly overweight my whole life. He was around 500 pounds, and it was just one of those things he could not get under control, and it, and it was unfair for him because he was born a big kid he was he was big when he was growing up and like you know a lot of people don't realize that what a i mean look we're dealing with it with an issue and especially in this country where food is we me and her were talking the other night about food is entertainment now exactly and, and it was the same way growing up for me like because i'm i was born in south carolina in a part of town where basically the only thing to do were to eat and go to, and go to church and way down, you know. That, that was the birthplace of the deep fry party, if I remember correctly. Exactly. Yeah. I've been to a couple of those. 
<laughs> and I actually didn't um, start changing and um, getting used to my, and realizing that I had a problem until like I got up in my teen years, you know, and realizing like, you know, this is a problem and if I want to solve it, you know, I'm going to have to do it myself. So, you know, one day I just sat down and um, put together a diet plan and um, a workout regimen and I did it for about two years straight and, and, I, st- and I kept my head strong with it and, um, you know, two years later I, I got where I am today. So, you know, um, that was that was just to have the strength to be able to do that on its own. That was a blessing too, you know. So like, that's huge. It's, it's, it, it's a it's a drug. Like food has become a drug nowadays. Absolutely. You don't realize it and they, they, tend to, they tend to use it in gross quantities and not realizing it's, it's harming you more than just physically, it's harming you mentally as well. Absolutely. You don't take the responsibility to actually change your life and then take the active steps to become better. Sure. Yeah, dude, I have a lot of respect for you for that. I always say that people don't think of food as medicine, but it is medicine. It's there to keep you alive, so why why would you eat a bunch of garbage or put garbage in your gas tank and expect your car to drive? Garbage like, in the, the gas tank. <laughs> yeah. I need a refill. Like, yeah. for, and for you to acknowledge it on your own and then fix it on your own and actually accomplish that is amazing because it's, it just doesn't happen very often. Yeah, it's absolutely huge in this day and age. Not a lot of people are willing to look themselves in the mirror and say, this needs to change, put right. together the plan, and then follow through with it. It doesn't sure. happen anymore. Sure. sure. You, are very, you are so right. Because, like, I meet so many different children and so many adults as well that say, like, I don't know where to start, I don't know what to do, and I just try to, like, encourage them and let them know, like, it's not as hard as you make it to be. It's as hard as literally you, you build it up in your brain. And, like, it's all up here. And the first step is the hardest step, and that's to, to admit that you have the problem and to start taking active steps to doing something about it. It's almost like we've done this to ourselves. We've allowed them to do this to us, and now it's time to take the power back as individuals in terms of that kind of thing. How do you how do you feel about that? Honestly, um, in a lot of ways, when it comes down to it, it is the person's personal responsibility to say no to those foods, you know. Like, it's sad that people put them out there for us to consume, but at the end of the day, it's personal responsibility. Nobody's forcing you to take that. Nobody's forcing you to eat those things. Mm-hmm. Nobody's, not for, nobody's forcing you to lay down and not get up and exercise. So, like, it's a personal responsibility you have to take in, in, in charge of yourself and realize that if I, if I want to look like this, this is what I have to do. If I want to look like that, that's what's going to happen, you know. Yeah. And, and that's a product of your own choices, not, not necessarily of your society. Your byproduct of the person that you choose to be because at the end of the day, it is a choice. And that's something that you have to make up in your mind and understand that you have the power to make that decision for yourself. And that you can't allow someone else to dictate what you decide to do and how you try to decide to conduct your life. And I think we would all agree that this man's abs don't lie. Absolutely not. <laughs> His abs don't lie. Yeah. Uh, in fact, I want to cling to that. Yeah. That was, that was, was absolutely... To your abs. With our absolutely. unhealthy alcoholic beverages. Yeah, these are totally healthy. This is apple juice. I don't know what these assholes are drinking. I'm drinking Guinness. It's full of vitamin B. Hey, there's some almond milk in here that's sort of good. <laughs> it's, one the, it's one of the best medicines you can take. I don't have any 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 objection to that at all. <laughs> no objections to that. Honestly, my main message to the entire world is I'm here for you and um at the end of the day we can we can accomplish anything we want to accomplish. You can't allow anyone to dictate how you live your life. What you say, what they say you can or can't do. At the end of the day, you have to make that choice to take those steps to get to a better you. And honestly, like I can't stress that enough. Like I hear so many people honestly telling me they don't know where to start. Like they've been hit, they, they've been brought down so much by the people around them. And I say I, I can't baby them about it. I want to, but I can't because like nobody babied me. And the way I am so strong minded today is because I made it up in my mind and I said that it's not about what people tell you. It's about what you tell yourself. And at the end of the day, like, you have to be the one to take those steps and to make it up in your mind that you're going to be that better person. You can't allow what someone else is feeding into your head to dictate how you feel about you as a person. And, but just to co-sign to that, like, um, anyway, people can reach me, but you can just Google me, Google me, Moses J. Mosley or Moses Mosley, and every time on social media pop up, or you can um, find me at, um, on Twitter at MosesMosley.com, I have a word, or Instagram at Moses Mosley, I have a you can find me on Facebook the same way, and I always try to respond to all my supporters, all my fans, and like, every day, like, if you want to follow me, you'll see that, like, I, like, I people that, like, all over the world send me fan arts, and I always post them and say thank you, and, I never, I, I always try to make myself available 
for the people who take the time to reach out to me because I never feel like I'm too important or too busy to reach out to anyone who took the time to reach out to me. Because honestly, in my eyes, everyone is equal. To some people, we tend to look for for guidance. Bravo, awesome. bravo. You get a golf clap. Access. And if you don't mind, we would like to consider you part of the Awesome Talk family. Right. Yep. You are, yes. Uh, I'm, well, I'm welcome. I feel welcome. <laughs> you, have, you have a fantastic spirit. You're, you're, you're a good person. You're talented. And this clink goes out to you, my friend. Oh, Absolutely. To Moses. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys are awesome.